Hi everybody, Kenny with Ugly Tent. Welcome to Basic Wilderness Survival, Lesson 3, Forage and Water. So when I think of survival, I think of the key elements, the three key elements, which are shelter, fire, and forage. That's how I remember the top three, in my opinion. Now this is my take on survival and what I've learned over the years and what I've been taught and what I've practiced over the years. So today we're going to continue with forage and water and uh, put those two together because they're they pretty much go together obviously back to the three weeks without food and three days without water. Water is a priority so we're going to focus on that and touch on the forage. Now there's a lot of videos, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of classes and courses you can take on foraging. So I'm just going to touch that a little bit today. I highly recommend learning to pack your own survival food. You know, um, even if it's just a day hike, pack enough stuff where if something goes wrong, um, whether it's you or another hiker, uh, that you have enough to be comfortable overnight. So let's talk briefly about foraging. Now, different times of year, you're going to forage different items. But there are some key items that you can almost always find uh, in, in my area, eastern Kentucky, year-round. And those items are going to be like dandelion, um, uh, wood, uh, wood sorrel. You know, there's uh, different types of wood sorrel, but those are edible. Now, these aren't something that you're going to live on. This is just something to put in your stomach so you don't feel as hungry or it satisfies you for a little while. So I've done plenty of videos on this in the past. With the red bud, you can eat red bud in the spring. Um, you know the wood sorrel, the dandelion. So I recommend researching all this. You know, try these things out before you have to do it in an emergency situation. So let's look around and see if we can find some wild edibles to forage on to solve that empty belly syndrome. So I didn't have to go far. Now this is easy to spot because of the red berries. You see they grow on a vine just like a regular strawberry. Now these false strawberries, they're not like the wild strawberry. The wild strawberry has an, an immense flavor. It's really, uh, it's, it's like, a, you take a strawberry like this and it's got the strawberry, it's got the taste of a full size strawberry. But these wild false berries, false strawberries, don't have quite the flavor. The good thing about these is that there's nothing similar to this that is uh, poisonous. That kind of tastes like a, a clover and a hint of a strawberry. So it is edible. You get enough of them, you fill your belly. Now, the vitamins and minerals a nutrition of the wild strawberry or the false strawberry is not uh, that much it doesn't have that much in it but this brings me to a good point I never see enough benefits to eating a wild mushroom uh, and foraging mushrooms to warrant taking the risk of eating and pick, picking and eating mushrooms you've got to really know you've got to really know your mushrooms in order to pick them so I would just when you're learning wild edibles, I just stay away from wild uh, mushrooms. Just stay away from mushrooms until you uh, feel confident that you can identify wild edibles better than going to mushrooms. That's my opinion. Of course, not far from that, we see your common dandelion. These are basically lettuce leaves. These are edible. It's a bitter. So, they say bitters are really good for your stomach, and that's one of the things that we have lost over the years, is the ability and the desire to eat bitters, and that's why we have the stomach issues we do, including myself. Now, as you get used to finding these, you'll start recognizing them easily, uh, more easily. This is bitter dock, and you can tell because it's a very distinctive leaf now the leaves themselves when they're this big aren't as good as when they're young. So these younger leaves, here, these are better. 
Mm. Again, another bitter. And the roots are edible. And medicinal. Found some more false strawberries. They're good. There's a lot of them around here. Okay, now that we've identified a few plants, I'm going to leave the rest up to you. Go out, get a book. There's plenty of apps. Get on your phone, find an app for this, then look up wild edibles. Do your research, find them for yourself. Try them out. Find out what you like, what you don't like. Become familiar with them. So let's move on to water next. How to get water in the woods. We're going to touch on this. Again, there's a lot of ways to do this. There's different filters. There's different techniques. Uh, there's, I'm going to show you a few of the basics because this is a basic wilderness survival. And then we'll incorporate that into our camp. So we'll put all three elements that we've been working on together. Okay, now we're gonna gather water. How do we know this water is good to drink? If you're not sure, then you might wanna double treat it. You might want to boil it and add a chemical to it, um, like a um, Katahdin water purifying tablet, which we'll talk about those. Uh, but I know this comes from the creek and also is spring fed. There's a spring up the hill that feeds this too. I got a nice area here where it's running. You always make sure your water is running. You want to try to stay away from stagnant pools. So I'm going to get my canteen out. And I'm going to cover it. Now I'm just keeping this simple, you know. So it's a it's a handkerchief. It's a cotton handkerchief and a canteen. I'm gonna cover it, and I'm going to soak it in the water or submerge it in the water. And what this does, this removes any of the sediment that would be in there. So it doesn't take long for it to fill up. So I'm going to continue filling this up with my handkerchief over it. that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use a water filter. This is a Grail Geopress. I used to backpack a lot in my younger days. You know, you're talking 30 years ago. So I've used every kind of filter and tablet you, you can imagine over the course of my journeys backpacking. But since I, I've gotten older, do less backpacking and more wild camping and bushcraft and um, car camping. I don't use the filters like I used to. But this thing is the best I've ever seen. All you do, it comes with a cup. I've got my leather I put over it. I did this leather um, cover for it. It's really hard to get off so I'm just going to dip it in there. But just like that We've got our full cup of water, or full bottle of water, and then you take your GeoPress, put it in the bottle, and simply push down. And get back in frame here. Just like that, you have drinkable water that quick. It's good stuff. This is by far. Hey, look, it come off. There we go. 
So anyone new to this, it's Grail. So I don't sell, nor am I sponsored by these. You gotta be a big dog to do that. Mm. And what's crazy is, it's really good. It tastes a lot better than um, bottled water. I mean, when you, when you drink this, if you take your tap water or your bottled water and put it in the grill, that's what I didn't use. Um, it even filters that, and you're like, holy cow, what am I drinking? So, that's a neat little piece there. Okay, lastly, I have an opossum pouch brand Millbank bag. These Millbank bags are made by my friend Jay, um, who is the proprietor of Possum Pouch. It's very simple. It's a lot like the handkerchief. It just gets the sediment out. That's all you're doing. It's just filtering the water into your canteen. It's taking out the sediment, sediment and heavy material. Ideally, you want to hang this from a tree, although it's working pretty good, me holding it up. Uh, hang it from a tree or from a ridge line, just hang it some way so it'll finish, continue, it'll continue to uh, fill your canteen. But you saw how easy that was. Nothing to it. And this is a very inexpensive item to add to a survival kit. You know, the grill, the water filter, the GeoPress, it's expensive. But something like this to add to your canteen kit is really inexpensive. And let's go boil some water. Now obviously you're going to want to have a metal canteen to put your canteen in the fire to boil the water. Because if you don't have chemicals to treat the water to know it's safe to drink, then you're going to want to boil it. And you can either just stick the canteen straight in the fire, if it's titanium or uh, tin or even aluminum. I will say this though, if it's aluminum canteen and you put it in the fire, it's probably going to warp it and it won't be perfect. Uh, for very long. But, if you have something like a canteen cup, again, a very inexpensive item to add to your wilderness kit, then you can boil water without using the canteen on the fire. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to add the water we got from the creek into our canteen cup. And I've started what's called a log cabin style fire, so I'm Laying the sticks in uh, opposing directions instead of a teepee where it's built up higher. That way you can have a base to lay it on, to lay your canteen cap on. And it creates like a little stove effect. So I'm going to let that burn a little longer and catch. And then I'll put this on there when it's good and ready. Okay, once you hear it singing, there's your rolling boil. That's what you're looking for. So once you've reached your, your boil, then it becomes safe to drink. In elevations below around 6,000 feet, it takes one minute of a rolling boil. Uh, if it's higher than 6,000 feet, elevation higher than 6,000 feet, they recommend three minutes. So in my pouch, I have the water purification tabs. This is the Katahdin brand. There's two in here. These are old, but they're still good. I need to get new ones though. And this is a single. I've used the other one on my journeys. Can you see that? Can you see that? They're inexpensive. So basically one tablet will do one canteen. So on top of that, I have a banana bag, which is, it's like liquid IV, I can think of what it's called. It's coffee, instant coffee, and a little snack, a little power bar. And if, you know, if you want to add stuff to this, and it just lives inside your canteen pouch, 
That way when you go out, you always know you have a nice little supply of comfort items or emergency items for your water. All right, guys, this concludes the forage and water lesson of basic water and survival. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful, learned something, or brushed up on some skills. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And we'll see you on the next lesson.